Sustainable Parents. What an honor to be with you today. We are so excited to have you join us for the Calm Confident Parenting Workshop. And we here are so excited because we just know that you oops, are going to be able to see change today. So the change today is that we are going to be really giving you tools, even starting today, tomorrow, and the next day, that are going to move the dial. You are here because you want your kids to listen. And you want them to do so in a way that is calm and connected and loving. And you haven't been able to find that yet. Somewhere out there, you have been getting advice and seeking tools, but it just keeps being that there are these patterns that you're stuck in where you're using gentle ways to ask them nicely or talk to them about their feelings. And then before you know it, they're not listening, it's not connecting, you're still seeing behaviors you wanna see change, um, continuing on, and so it's been frustrating. And of course, when life is frustrating and we don't feel like we've got some sense of control, then we lose our cool. We're not calm at all. So you're in the right place. Friend, I want you to let us know that you are here and what is it that you are most craving in being with us, whether you're watching live or in the replay, say what most brought you here. Was it that you're looking for more calm and confidence in yourself, tired of the battles that you keep going through and the ways you keep losing your cool and yelling at your kids because you're so frustrated? Or is it that you have been looking for ways to get them to listen better? So do you want the calm and confidence or are you looking for more cooperation? Put those keywords, calm or confidence or cooperation. Hi, Dorothea. Hi, Gab, listening over in Instagram. We're so glad you're here. Hi, Corey. Hi, Mariah. Wonderful. Hi, Mountain Sleepers. So many joining us. Hi, Sarah. So great to see you guys. Wonderful. So we are going to help you in this workshop to exactly get that, to change so you feel more calm, you feel more confident, and you're getting more cooperation for the kids. It all is really possible. Today especially, you will not leave without a super effective tool. Today we're talking about the three reasons that our kids don't listen and how we can unlock and get out of that. There are three really common reasons in my 15 years of working as a parenting coach and licensed therapist. Again and again, we identify these, we solve them, we move forward, and it gets easier. Because today we titled Parenting Smarter, Not Harder, because you have the capacity to outsmart these kids. You really do. We're going to outsmart the ways that they have maybe been pushing us to the brink and be able to know we can parent smarter, not harder, and get them listening. Make sure that you stay all the way until the end, because today and tomorrow and the next day do build upon each other. And today, at the end of the day, I'm going to be giving you my super favorite one tool out of our CEO Signature Toolkit of Sustainable Parenting, which gives you a 30-second fix to when your kids are melting down or emotional or resistant or defiant. So stay tuned till the end. We are going to make these changes together. We're going to solve this and get you out of the struggle and into change. And I want to know who is here by letting us know if you, oh, Kurt, Courtney, you are so kind. Marius is here. Odd is here. So many people joining us. We're so excited to see you. So I want to know, first of all, oh, I'm guessing that three things are true about you for showing up to be here today. The first thing that I believe is true about you is that you are a parent who really, really cares about your kids. 
you wouldn't be here if you didn't. I mean, it takes time out of your day to show up, to be in this space. And I am so proud of you for doing that. I'm honored to be in this space with parents who care enough to say, I love my kids so much. I don't want to keep suffering in this way. I don't want us to, I don't want us to feel like our relationship keeps having these battles. You are in the right place. And secondly, I'm guessing that you're here because somehow things have not been going how you thought they would. That with the best of intentions and even all that you might be trying to learn on the internet or books, like it's just not clicking the way that you would love to see it click. And friend, that is not your fault. I'm gonna explain why that is not your fault and how we are gonna give you something that totally can change your life with with the tools that you're gonna get here. And third of all, I'm guessing that you're here because you're ready for change. You're ready to end the battles that you've been in and how it's hurting your relationship. It's like too painful not to make change. And so you are here to get the tools so quick and easily you, and effectively, you can start to have a better relationship, better connection and better cooperation, more harmony in your household overall. Am I right? If I'm right, would you put the word ready? I wanna know who is like here because they are completely ready. Hi Maria, I'm so glad you're here too. Hi Becky, hi Emily. So wonderful to see you all. Love seeing your names popping up. Tiffany, Courtney, Odd, Mariah. Wonderful. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad. Well, let me start by telling you, hi, Jennifer. Hi, Corey. My most embarrassing moments as a mom, because I have two kids, they're seven and nine, and I am not immune from just making a lot of mistakes in parenting. And today I'm going to tell you the alternatives to these mistakes. But let me just share with you two examples of how I totally sometimes end up parenting in ways that end up feeling harder and not working. First of all, I have a son who's a very sensitive soul. And I'll never forget one of the most embarrassing moments with him was when I took him to swim lessons. He was about four-ish, maybe five. And we got there and I thought I had prepped him for how it was going to go well and be fun and enjoyable. And as soon as I had to leave and him be in the class, he just screamed bloody murder, clung to me like a koala or like a possum that fell out of a tree and was just like not going to stay in this class. And of course, it was so embarrassing because it was this space that has four sides to the pool and all of the parents are like behind all of their kids setting up for classes on each side of this pool. And I feel like they're all glaring at me like, what is wrong with your kid? You know, that's definitely how it felt. And so I'm panicking and trying to do anything I can to solve it. I'm like, it's okay, like, let's calm down, take a breath. You know, you can just like relax, it's gonna be all right. Let's look at the water over here, it's gonna be fun. None of that was working. And then I'd start getting so mad and my blood boiling, my face so red that then I'd switch over to like, why are you doing this? Why does this have to be so difficult? Why, can't, why is this hard for you? This is supposed to be fun. Look around you, nobody else is acting this way. I start throwing out threats. Did any of this connect or happen in your lives? Do you have a sensitive kid? And you've been in that moment where you're like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed at the meltdown that he or she is having either in front of my in-laws or in a public space. I've been there. And in addition, I can share about my daughter that I've been in some embarrassing moments, not because what she was doing, but because of what I was doing. See, I have a very strong-willed daughter. And that strong-willed daughter is someone who can just push me to the very brink of my maturity, <laughs> push me over the edge into doing ridiculous things and just, uh, because I get these power struggles with her. 
She is this dynamo personality, and I know that's going to serve her well in a lot of ways in life. But an example I can think of where I just was like so immature and losing it was we were going to gymnastics this fall, and I remember telling her, okay, time to go. And she's like, I'm not going. I'm like, yes, you are. Get in the car, you know. We get in the car, I finally coax her to getting into there, and the whole drive, she's like, you can't make me. I'm not doing this. So what do I launch into? I start the threats and I'm like, well, then you're going to owe me $30 because that's what this class costs. <laughs> She's like, I don't have any money anyways. I'm like, well, I'm going to garnish your money from the tooth fairy then because I have a secret in with her and I'll just get it out from under your pillow before you even wake up. <laughs> ah, it took me till I was threatening to garnish from the tooth fairy that some aha came up like, Flora, what are you doing? You're throwing a bigger tantrum than she is, and that's not making it any better. In both of these stories, I'm going to share our examples of ways that I was doing the three key mistakes that often keep parents in cycles of struggle, and you might be able to identify with them as well. But first, I want to know, do you have either of those kind of kids in your lives? Do you have a sensitive girl or boy or a strong-willed? girl or boy or child? Would you share in the comments? What are we working with? What is the, the unique makeup of your amazing little ones that makes it challenging? <laughs> I see a lot of people relating. Sensitive boy, yes. Um, oldest is the same. My oldest son was absolutely like that. Sensitive meltdowns. Uh, yes. <laughs> I have said the same thing since Mariah charging my kids uh, salary. <laughs> if you relate to something that someone else is sharing, would you please give a like or a comment response to it so that they can know they are not alone? It's one of my favorite things to do in this workshop and then in the work that I do with parents to let us all know that we're not alone. So like or comment on those that are sharing things. Oh, you guys. So here is the thing. I'm going to give you the specific reasons that it's been challenging with those strong-willed kids or those powerhouse dynamo um, little ones or those sensitive, emotional children in your lives. And I know you guys have been sharing in Messenger. I've been diving in with many of you sharing challenges like, gosh, the kids just pit us against each other. They have these big feelings and emotional upsets. feels like they won't listen unless we're counting down or taking something away. And there's the constantly pushing against boundaries and breaking rules. I can promise you everything that I've just seen you write. Blended family, Emily, yes, teenager, odd. These three errors are likely the culprits of what keeps you feeling stuck in cycles of struggle. And when you can identify them and step into new action, you're going to start seeing new results. And I'm gonna be super, super tangible with you here. So the three key errors that I see many parents stuck in that keep these cycles of struggle are parenting from the neck up, parenting in a pinball way, and asking the wrong questions. Stick with me here to hear all three of these. And remember, at the very end, I'm going to give you my super tangible powerhouse tool that helps to end power struggles in 30 seconds or less. So the first one of parenting from the neck up is likely where you've been if you notice that you are telling them how things should be different. You're like, I've told him so many times that this is not how you treat your sister. We have talked about it, that this is how else you need to calm down. Or that in the heat of the moment, you're like trying to talk to them about how to make it more, how to calm down. Or you are talking them through why it doesn't make sense that they're irrationally upset about this thing, like the blue cup or 
or that they can't go to their friend's house. If you have been neck up parenting, it means you keep getting stuck in the trap of using logic when the brain is not in a logical state. Of course, they don't listen to you when you're logically trying to talk through how to get them to change when they're in an illogical state. And most often our kids are in a very illogical state when they're resistant, emotional, or defiant, right? We know from the brain and um, Daniel Siegel tells us we have the frontal area that is your logic, powerhouse, um, decision-making, um, self-control part of your brain. We have our emotional limbic system part of our brain. And we have the fully flipped lid, amygdala hijacked, fight, flight, or freeze part of the brain. And with Caleb, some very simple things like flip his lid and he gets into that emotional state. And if I come in like I did in that pool with all of this like talking and logic and telling him how to calm down and telling him why it's fine and telling him the threats, it doesn't change. Because I'm trying to be logical with an illogical brain. Can you relate? If this stands out to you, you're like, oh, I totally parent from the neck up. We're always trying to explain and lecture and none of that changes the dial. Put neck up. And again, if you see someone else say it and you can relate, give them a like, give them a, oh, me too. Connect with each other. Yeah, Courtney says, my five-year-old struggles with confidence. Yes. Teenagers. Yes. Neck up. And that makes me think of amazing parents, Alyssa and Martin, who were like frustrated that they would try to explain things and talk it through and it never seemed to change the dial. My kids just don't listen. And then when they got the tools from our CEO Toolkit of Sustainable Parenting, they started seeing that the kids easily would be cooperative. I remember Martin telling the story of a simple tool from our toolkit that he used, and it was like, I went from battling, reminding, nagging, and then I said that thing, Flora, and he just walked upstairs, found his shoes, put them on, and walked out the door. What? Doesn't have to be harder. We can do it smarter. The second key error that I see a lot of parents landing in is pinball parenting. And I was totally doing that with Caleb, especially with emotions. And I also fall into it with my powerhouse girl, which is that we bounce between being kind and gentle and repeating and reminding. And then we're like overly kind and we get so frustrated and they're not listening. And so we go over to overly firm and we are losing our cool and we are snappy and we are like from gentle mom to monster mom. And if this is you, you are not alone. It is so easy to end up in that place. Like, because when they won't listen and the overly gentle, overly gentle doesn't work, then we're like, oh, okay, never mind. And that's pinball parenting. Unfortunately, this leads to the kids not listening because they are going to just keep pushing boundaries, pushing uh, against what we are telling them to do. Because when we're inconsistent, they are going to consistently push. When we're inconsistent, they're going to consistently push. If we're pinballing between gentle, 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 and then monster, they never know where the bar really is. They're not seeing a predictable, consistent, kind, and firm boundary. They're going to keep consistently pushing. They're looking for it. They are searching for it. They need it so badly. And I think of amazing Mama Jess, who was in this very workshop just three months ago. And this was one of the biggest changes that has just transformed her life with her two and a half year olds, was that when she started to know and use all of our tools in the CEO toolkit to be able to 
be kind and firm at the same time, leaning more into her firmness than really first felt comfortable, she noticed how it actually allowed her to keep more of her kindness. That you don't have to be mean in order to get the kids to listen, but if you're overly soft, overly soft, then yeah, you end up having to be overly mean. And if you want to break that cycle, work with me. Let's work together and master the blend that is kind and firm at the same time. And that gives you the ability to be, to be kind and gentle while getting the kids to listen. And it helps them to stop pushing. When we are consistent, they will stop consistently pushing. I see it time and time again. The third key thing that has likely been a piece of your kids not listening is asking the wrong questions. And what that means is that we can get into saying to our kids, why is this so hard for you? Why can't you behave like Johnny? Why can't you just listen? Why did you get so emotional? Why do you get upset all the time? Can you relate? Has that happened for you? And if so, then here is the thing. If you have been frustrated that the kids aren't, are that, and you're saying to them, why, why is this so hard? Why are you doing this? You are giving your power away. You're asking a two, five, even 11 or 13 year old to have the answer to this behavior challenge when we really have the power to have the answer. We can shift from why are you doing this which, by the way, have they ever had a great answer for you? <laughs> have you ever had a kid like, yes, mother, this is why? <gasps> yes. No. So what they need from you, and Courtney, great question. What if no matter what, they just don't listen? It's because we have not stepped into our power. We have not stepped into how to be kind and firm in a way that has boundaries that we enforce and that are effective. And if they just keep not listening, then I'll tell you the answer. There are Then we haven't cracked the code on the right, effective, powerful, simple ways to enforce those boundaries. And that's one of my favorite things to help parents with. I know Courtney already has a one-on-one -on -one scheduled with me, and this is what we will dive into together. So I want you to think for a second, and remember and about these three things. Which one of them most resonates with you about why your kids maybe have not been listening? Is it the neck up that you've been doing all this talking and not enough connecting and, and actions? That we're trying to be logical with a brain that is not in a logical state? Right neck up. Or if you realize, I think I have been inconsistent. And the more I've been inconsistent, of course, they keep consistently pushing right pinball. I've been that pinball. And with that inconsistency, they keep pushing. Or third, is it asking the wrong questions? You've been looking to them and saying, why are you doing this? Instead of thinking, what am I going to do about it? And here's the thing, I want you to think of a number. What amount of hours do you think have been spent every week to these habits that aren't serving you? If you were to give it a number, what amount of hours have been spent on these patterns that are not serving you? Put that number down. And I want you to know, friend, there is good news with this number. This number is the number of hours you are going to get back. Because when you choose to keep saying yes to the support and the strategies that we have here for you that are super effective and that are, you know, simple and move the dial to them listening, you are going to get that time back. That's what testimonial after testimonial says when they work in sustainable parenting. It doesn't have to be harder. We can do it smarter. And what would you love to do with that time back? 
Yeah, Courtney says, I don't have a lot of free time thanks to these dang kids. And you can, if you weren't spending it on the, the battles, you could be spend, spending it on the fun. You could be spending it on having the evening with your partner and relaxing or having time to yourself and relaxing. You could be spending it just enjoying the time with your kids, having them quickly get their shoes on, get out the door, go to do the fun stuff, not battling them when you're out at outings, not battling them when you're on vacation together and actually enjoying it. So this is what's there for you. So I told you at the very end, I was going to give you my super powerhouse tip and I want to give that to you now. But your homework for today is to first set in your calendar a reminder to join us tomorrow because we're giving you super tangible tools to make this change in your family life. And secondly, I want you to practice this one small tool. If you are someone who's been frustrated that you have the parenting from the neck up that hasn't been working, I want you to try this secret. This is a secret that comes from our five key strategies in the toolkit of sustainable parenting, where we say when we are seeing the kids be red, resistant, emotional, or defiant, we're going to turn to be the CEO. We're going to be the CEO. And in that C section, we have this tool, which is the 30 second silent hug. It may seem super overly simple, but here's what I want you to try is you've been parenting from the neck up when your kid is resisting you and being defiant. I want you to try out pausing, pull them in no matter what their age, 13 down to two and give them a 30 second silent hug. Silent. And then go back to asking them again what you would like them to do. That's it. I want you to notice how a very small, simple shift can have very powerful different results. And come back tomorrow because we're going to step into more super actionable strategies to be able to get you to unlock that common confidence. Once we've let go of these errors that weren't serving us, we can step into the more effective strategies that I'm going to give you tomorrow. These strategies I'm calling the best secret to less anger because when we have tools that work, I see it time and time again, just like poof, deflate the anger, frustration, blow ups, because that's what you're seeking. You want them to actually listen. Can't wait to see you tomorrow, friends. Join me again.